This is Rally Reykjavik, a three-day event held in the southern part of Iceland. It's a very demanding rally and um, it takes you through glacial valleys and active volcanoes, everything you want to find in a good rally. My name is Christian Enert and I'm your host for this round. This is the fourth round of the Icelandic Rally Championship. So let's have a look at the standings. Now overall, Sigurður Bragi and Aðalsteinn, they drive a Group N Evolution Lancer. Henning and Outney also driving a Mitsubishi second. And Baldur and Hanna in third. Now in Iceland we drive a non-turbo 4x4 class as well. Guðni Freyr and Einar lead the championship. Now Rally Reykjavík started on a Thursday. Uh, three short stages and one long stage. Uh, continuing on the Friday with long and demanding stages in the southern part of the country and then on s saturday was the final day where they drove through geothermal areas and uh, very demanding long race courses in glacial valleys no one has won this rally more often than you what's the key to victory in a rally like this oh i would say the main thing is to keep it steady try to save the car it's a long long rally and if you uh, abuse the car too early, you will pay for it for the rest of the rally, so I always try to take it easy the first day, even the first day and um, uh, until the half of the rally, and then a little bit increase so that the car is uh, in a tolerable situation in the last stage. What will be the most challenging bit of this rally? Now you're the winner from last year, so you must know this rally very well. I think the Saturday will be the factor. The Kaldidalur, the special station Kaldidalur, will be difficult for people. And what's the key to victory in a long rally like this? Take it safe, but fast but safe. What makes this uh, rally unique compared to other rallies like this? It's a three-day rally uh, and uh, it is uh, all kinds of stages. It's, it's uh, mountains, it's, uh, it's by the sea, it's, uh, it's rough gravel, it is sand, it's lava. It's very, very technical. You have to be good in everything uh, to, to win these rallies, uh, at least to have a good chance to win the rally. You can see the road here, while it's completely different in England, where you have all those trees and those things to hide when you're going peeing. It's also to hide the road. So here you have just lava, which is quite low. And uh, I think, well, basically the comparison is black and white. Rallying here is more open, it's more fast, it's more compared to Finland maybe. Uh, but we have those twisty Mickey Mouse stages as well. You got longer stages. I mean, the average stage mile is like 15, 20 miles, the average stage in this rally. While in England, most stages are maybe five, seven miles. So it's, it's more of an endurance. And uh, what's the key to victory in a long rally like this? Uh, drive safe and make others do mistakes. <laughs> yeah, especially sly, uh, driving slowly. I know it sounds stupid, but uh, that's basically the key to it. Henning and Outne had a huge role on the first stage of last year's rally. Disaster struck early when they cut a corner too close and hit a big rock. Uh, Henning, uh, you rolled quite heavily on the first stage uh, last year. Uh, how will you drive today? Ah, similar. A little bit more carefully. <laughs> and how do you think the standings will be uh, tonight? I think Daniel is going to be first. I hope, hope for us to be second or third. We kick off the action at Tubala. This is the second stage of the rally. Here we have Sigurd Braje and Adolstedt Simonsson. They were driving very well at, in the beginning of the rally. They lead the championship. Here we have Henning Olsson and Altni Gunnlaugsson. Not the same car they rolled. Not the one that we saw from um, before. They are locals. Now Baldur Arnar and Hanna Rún. Icelandic champions of the non-turbo category last year. This is the first year in uh, stepped up machinery. Daniel Sigurdsson and Ásta Sigurdóttir, their siblings. They won Rally Reykjavík three times, double Icelandic champions. They started really well, took the lead on stage number one. Here we have Baldur Haraldsson and Katri Maria, national champions since last year. And Marian Sigurdsson and Isa Guðsson. Marian is the brother of Daniel and Ásta, who we saw earlier, a true rally family. And he's um, 
competing for the first time in a very long time. Now we're at the Hapnafjörður racetrack. Daniel Narsta kept extending their lead throughout the day, however Henning hit trouble. Henning, what are you here? Broten Öxul, sprungin Turbin og Hossa og eitthvað meira. Þetta er eftir þessi kvöld? Já, já. Við græjum þetta. Now we turn our attention to the non-turbo category. This is Guðni Freyr and Einar. They took a de demanding lead on stage one, taking over 30 seconds over the next rival. Magnus and Ragnar have been driving well this summer. They are currently second in the standings. However, the rally didn't go off. Gunnar Gatlin Magnus, they kept the challenge on with Guðni. However, Gwyn managed to pull a 30 second lead. Gunnar got second of the day. He's been competing in the English Championship last year. Now, Gala Gunnarsson and Hörður Birgisson. And this is a brand new car. Thorður Gwyni and Snorri. First time out in this new non-turbo Subaru Impreza. Sigurjón and Kristin. They've been building up pace all summer. However, a little bit is needed to challenge for wins. Skafti and Gunnar. Their first ever outing and what a rally to start in. The three day demanding event, hardest rally in the calendar. And uh, for them to finish would just be quite a good result. Now let's turn our attention to the Jeep category. Here we have Grimm de Snorri and Magnus. They were leading the championship before this round and could have um, clinched the title. However, the, the competition hasn't been stiff until Ayo brought this car. Hey Oliver, this is quite a unique car, isn't it? Yes, it's a heavily modified Grand Cherokee. And what are the main changes? The main changes are uh, weight uh, transfer. I've, uh, I've um, reduced the weight in front and uh, added to the back to get uh, better car control. Uh, the motor is uh, from the factory. It's, it's uh, very lazy, though it has, it has uh, quite a lot of torque. But now we have uh, changed the camshaft, so the power band is up there, and uh, um, it's it's very powerful. He says it's powerful. He showed that in the first day. A lot of power in this Jeep, a properly built machine, and it's going to be exciting to watch them. Now Thorkell and Thorren, they were um, third on the first day, and behind them. Hartford and Bull, foreign competitors from uh, England driving a Bowler Land Rover. And uh, with Rally Reykjavik being the only international rally on the calendar, a very uh, exciting event for foreign competitors to come. They had a lot of fun during th this race, and uh, the roads here are perfect for these kind of vehicles. On Thursday night, a service break in Reykjavik where cars could be repaired after a day through rough stages. Now let's have a look at the standings. Daniel Nasta, they lead. Seyrude Brian Alsted are second place, 43 seconds apart. Baldur Arnar and Hanna third. Daniel, first place after day one, was it just easy? Yes, walk in a park. Uh, and you can't drive faster? <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. Uh, will you do that tomorrow or just uh, uh, play on the advantage that you have? Uh, it will be a mixture. If, if anybody gets closer, if you hit some trouble, have a puncture. We had a puncture today, but uh, thankfully in a very short stage, so we didn't lose any that much time. Um, if you puncture on Hekla, that is two minutes, so then you have some gainage. Well, we have to play on tomorrow. It's a very long day of rallying but it will be enjoyable and on the best roads in the world. Alstead, in the second place after day one, uh, but quite far behind Daniel. Are you happy with that? We are happy with our position, yes. Uh, we are uh, ahead of uh, our main competitors in the, uh, in the main competition, yes, and uh, in the championship, yes. And uh, Daniel, the leader, he is unbelievably fast with a, on a very good car, and uh, we are not crying, trying to catch him. Seur uh, Bray is uh, very fast on uh, SS Hekla. Do you think you will be able to keep up with him? Yeah, we will try to keep up with him, but yeah, he is very fast and we will try. Good luck. Thank you. Guðni Freyr and Einar lead the non-turbo class. Guðni, this must be a dream start for you, first in class? Yeah, really happy with the day to day. 
And uh, how will the how will you drive tomorrow? Just say for uh, will you build on this lead? On stage Hekla, will most of the stage will will drive pretty safe, but there's some places you can take chances. But yeah, like I say, most most of the states will be driven safe. Gunnar, second place in class, uh, you can't be happy with that, are you? Uh, it's it's okay, I think. Uh, Gunde took a big chance, a big risk on Dubai, and I think we were uh, finding a, a decent pace with small issues, but I think we'll just keep the same pace tomorrow. And uh, as says Hakla tomorrow, a very difficult stage and a long one. It won't be easy tomorrow, will it? No, it won't. Uh, I'm not a great friends with Hekla, but I hope to, to uh, keep the same pace and hopefully put in some good times. Good luck. Thank you. An early start of day two for the competitors. Stages uh, in the southern part. Here we are watching them drive around Hekla, an active volcano. You know, if you ever want to be in a fast car around the volcano, it's right now. It's overdue. And uh, the terrain that you're watching, not this one, this is through the lava fields here, this is all ash. Now we can see Seudebrae has some damage, however nothing uh, spectacular. Baldur and Hanna, they were having a very good run throughout the day, however, it didn't go so well. Here we see blue smoke puffing from the engine, they thought it was a turbo failure. Are you going to shift the turbine in the hot air? We saw it. How are you? They managed to replace the turbo, however once it was replaced they realized uh, that the engine, something more was wrong and the engine needs a complete rebuild. So that's the end of Baldur and Hanna's race. Henning and Altne also ran into trouble, they were hoping for a good race, however on day 3 their race was cut short with a gearbox failure. Marian Nisak here, when we turn our attention back to the rally. Now, after all the retirements of the other ones, you would have expected this car to be in third place. However, it was Ayo in his brand newly built Jeep Cherokee. And uh, obviously the power that he promised was delivering good times. Uh, Ayolver, it's been going quite well before the lunch break today. Yes. Been going, uh, it's been going, been going okay. We uh, had a, had a little bit of puncture, but uh, otherwise good. Uh, you changed the suspension a little bit uh, last night. Uh, have the changes worked? Yes, we did loosen up on the rebound a bit because the the car was following the the, the ground, you know, going down with the with the rear end, and uh, it's better. And I also uh, raised up the raised him up one uh, 15 millimeter in the back, and it's, it's better. It's a better, better, little bit better to steer. Guðmund does not end. Magnus, they were in second place in the Jeep category. However, the gap was growing as they struggled with clutch failure. And uh, it wasn't looking good for them at this point. Now, we also run a two-wheel drive class in the championship. And here we have Eirikur and Sverrir in their Honda Civic. They had a rough start to the rally, went off. And uh, we're stuck there for quite a while. Here we see the next competitor coming past, and there they are, Erigur and Sverir. And uh, that gave the lead to Gunnar Freyr and Guðmundur, who kept it and held it and won the rally. Maybe not convincingly, they ran into quite a few troubles like we see here. Sometimes you just need rear, rear wheel drive. Now we turn our attention back to the non-turbos. Here is Gwyni in the beginning of day two. He drove too slowly in the first stage of the day around Hakla, and on stage number two he picked up a puncture. So that meant that Gunnar Karl took the lead and uh, Gwyni's 40 second lead had turned into uh, a 40 second lead for Gunnar Karl. Now um, the race was on and Gwyni had to pick up the pace. After the lunchtime service break, Gunni put his foot down, drove very fast and managed to cut Gunnar Karl's lead down to just 20 seconds before the final day. Here we have Sigurjón and Kristin and uh, they had just passed Thorður and Snorri who had uh, suspension issues through this long and demanding stage.
Now Magnus and Ragnar, their race wasn't going well enough. They were in a position to challenge Guðni for the title. However, they needed a stronger result in Rally Reykjavík and we're showing that while the newcomers, Skafti and Gunnar, they were up to third place. Garðar and Hörður, they were driving at a reasonable pace, just um, safely getting, trying to get to the end of the race. Now let's have a look at the standings after day two. Daniel and Ásta lead, Sigurður Bræ and Aðalsteinn second, Sigurður Bræ looking more at the championship, Daniel and Ásta doing a one-off race. Eolur and Heimir were in third in the Jeep Cherokee and Marian and Isak in the yellow group and Lancer Evolution. Now let's hear from Ásta, co-driver of Daniel. Uh, Ásta, it's been going quite well for you uh, this afternoon. Yes, very well, thank you. Uh, is the car 100% uh, okay? No, it's not. We have uh, um, a hole on the exhaust that is melting down something important under the car. So we are trying, everybody's trying to fix it right now. Daniel and Ásta are in the first place. They are uh, far too much ahead, so it's not possible for us to catch them tomorrow, I think. Uh, Seo de Braille has uh, 30 years of experience. It must be quite an uh, easy situation for you two. Rally is never easy and uh, we have some long stages tomorrow, uh, almost 80 kilometers uh, and uh, pr some of them pretty difficult, so uh, you know, we, we never know um, until the end. But uh, you're still driving at full pace, aren't you? Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. So, so we just have a very good flow in everything, so we just drive as fast and happy as we can. Uh, Goodmunder, you had some problems with the car this morning. Yeah, we drove the first two stages with no clutch. But we got it fixed. We yeah, fixed it in the lunch break and it's been okay since then? Yeah, it's been okay. Uh, now you told us uh, that you were going to wait for Eolver to do some mistakes or something like that. That hasn't happened. Uh, what's your plan now? Ah, we're just going to be patient and still wait. <laughs> Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Gunnar Kart leads the non-turbo class after day two. Gunnar, you started the day uh, 40 seconds behind uh, Guðni, now you're 20 seconds ahead. It must be a, a great day for you. Yeah, I'm very happy with uh, how the day ended out. Uh, we decided to maintain the pace from yesterday and uh, improve on it a little bit. And we just managed to put on a good show and, and keep a steady pace and it paid off. Uh, Einar, you're second in your class right now, you can't be happy with that. No, we're not happy with that because in today we started with a 45 uh, head, uh, head start on Gunnar and uh, he we, he managed to ca catch us because we uh, run a flat tire on one stage and he got the, got our seconds back and now now he's 20 seconds ahead of us. Uh, only 20, 20 seconds to uh, Gunni. It must be full throttle tomorrow. Absolutely, we can't allow uh, any mistakes tomorrow. So we won't be driving 100%, but. 95%. So Gunnar and Magnus head out first in the non-turbo class for day number three. He just said that he was going to drive 95% to make sure that this guy, Gwune and Einar, wouldn't pass them. However, 95% wasn't enough as Gwune and Einar took a very good drive through Kaldedalur and managed to get a 15 second lead on Gunnar. Now here we are on board with Gunnar. Next stage, he knew he needed to pick up the pace and keep the fight up to Gwune. However, sometimes when you put in 100%, things can go wrong. A big off and uh, a very lucky Gunnar not to damage the car as um, the Kaldidalur stage is one of the most penalizing terrains uh, around the race course. So uh, this meant that Gwune now had a comfortable lead. He just needed to bring it home, finish the race, and he would win his first Rally Reykjavik. So final stage, pressure on in the non-turbo. However, Daniel and Ásta had a demanding lead draw well in the last stage and secured their win. Rally Reykjavik has ended through that bend for many years. Now, drama, Sigurd Braje was supposed to be the second car to the finish line. However, Marian and Isak show up first. A few moments later though, Sigurd Braje and Alstedt come through. 
and it's a long stage. Sevilla Bright just decided to take it easy, take it slow. He know he need, knew he needed the points for the championship, and they secured second place. Baldur and Katrin, they finished the rally here. However, they were had run into huge problems throughout the rally and finished the rally in 14th place. Not something you expect from the national champion. Now, Eolwur and Heimer, they were driving very fast, but look at this smoke from the engine. This is through Kaltedaler. It wasn't looking good for Eo. Eolwur, we saw a lot of smoke out of the car in the last stage. What's wrong? Uh, we think we have a hole in the piston. Yeah. So uh, the rally is over for you? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it, we could we could keep on and uh, see what happens, but uh, I don't think that's wise. On to the non-turbos. Gunnar Kapp here finishing the rally. He knew he had to take back 40 seconds from Guðni in this stage. Drove a very fast stage. Here comes Guðni. Would his time be enough? It would. Gunnar Kapp only managed to clinch back 10 seconds from Guðni. And therefore, Guðni wins the race. Now Skafti and Gunnar. The rookies in this rally, they came in third, a fantastic result, beating the runner-ups in the championship now, Ragnar and Magnus. Here we see Sigurjón and Kristin, they had a quiet rally, finishing fifth, however, com collecting experience, but look at that, behind them, very close, Thorkell and Thorin, and uh, they're not a sight we see often rally, because it wasn't quite over, as the camera pans back, we have two more cars coming, that's Thorður and behind them, the leaders in the Jeep class have a lot of problems, broken prop shaft in the front, and Guðmundur Snorri and Magnus, they were in quite a lot of drama, they need to make it all the way back to Park for May, to the finish line, to win the rally they need to finish, and if they finish they are champions. Yep. So they managed to get going and uh, made it to the finish line, meaning that they are now the Icelandic champions in the Jeep category. Guðmundur, uh, congratulations with the title and first place in Rally Reykjavík. Thank you. Uh, but it was very close at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, we barely made it out of the last stage, but yeah, somehow we managed with uh, the car uh, broken. Uh, you had a seven minute advantage to uh, Thorkell. Uh, that was very handy when you lost quite a bit of time on the last stage. Yeah, I think we lost about five minutes, so it was pretty close. Daniel, first place, congratulations. Thank you. What were the conditions like out there today? Ah, absolutely perfect. Perfect weather and road condition. Yeah, I think I've never seen it so good in of any of the stages. Uh, this is your fourth uh, Rally Reykjavik win. Uh, what's the key to victory in a long rally like this? Um, it's probably to find the speed, which is a good speed, and to keep it. Don't overdo it, but still really keep the, you find the 85-90% of the maximum and be able to keep it for 300 kilometers on stages. And Sigurd Braje, second place today, all according to plan? Yes, it's all according to plan. We were just trying to defend our uh, uh, position for the Icelandic Championship, and our two main competitors, they had difficulties while while everything went fine with us, so uh, the last part of this rally was just cruising cruising the car home. Like Sir Braille said, he was driving for the points, and he leads the championship with 62.5 points. Daniel Austa second. Now Sir Braille only needs to finish fifth to be crowned Icelandic champion. Gunnar and Einar, their third overall, even though they drive in the non-turbo class. Now let's have a look at that. Gunnar and Einar win the rally, Gunnar Karl and Magnus come second, Skafti and Gunnar third in their debut event, Magnus and Ragnar were fourth. Now here we see the rookies, Gunnar and Einar win that event also. The names in red are not qualified for the rookie competition, so Magnus and Ragnar are second there, Sigurjón and Kristin third. That's all for now, the champagne finished this event like all good racing events should end. Next time round we will show you the Icelandic All-Terrain Rally, the other international rally where foreign competitors can come and race through the magnificent stages that we have in Iceland. Thanks for now, bye bye.